I am Sonia Smullen, a theatre design student at the moment. I don't know where I'm going next. And today I will be discussing um, script writing with George Bennett. Do you want to give an introduction? Yeah, uh, my name's George. I'm also a theatre design student, <laughs> uh, but I direct and I write as well. And I perform, I play music and stuff. Um, yeah, so I guess all rounded. Have you come up with a name for the podcast yet? Um... No, I'm going to call it no name or un, unnameable. Untitled. There's a there's a band the the, the, the that I really like, and I discovered yeah, I that, that I think. the reason they called it the the is because they wanted it to be a blank background, so it wouldn't really be uh, narrowed down to sure. some sort of yeah yeah. So it's like genreless. <coughs> yeah, that's fun. I like that. But to be honest, I'm not as cool as that, so I will probably <laughs> name it. Eventually. At some point, yeah. Yeah, I will have to name it. Well, you know, you've got until this is edited, so yeah, yeah. you've got time. Yeah. Anyway, so um, I guess the reason for starting these podcasts are to just talk to people um, on different topics, nothing too specific, but just seeing um, what their approach is to certain problems or things that they do and seeing how they go about them. So today, as I mentioned earlier, the script writing. Uh, George, you're into directing yeah. and script writing. Mm. And I was just wanting to uh, ask if you could discuss the kind of texts and, um, you know, genres that you're interested by or reoccurring themes that come into your Sure, work. yeah. Um, I've realised recently, I think, I don't know if I was saying this to you the other day, but I've realised recently that, like, decay pops up a lot in my work. Like, okay. I write a lot about sort of decay and sort of like um, the, the sort of various forms of that so for example I wrote a piece uh, and directed the piece uh, called Revelation 11 in 2018 uh, as part of the Barnstable Fringe Festival um, and that was all about a, um, a lad who was part of a cult sorry who, what was the name of that? Uh, Revelation 11 Revelation, um, I think the company at the time was called Collage I think <laughs> We've gone through about three mm -hmm. name changes since then, <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I'm a bit awful with the names. But yes, yeah, so Revelation 11, uh, it was all that sort of like this lad who was sent out of his cult uh, into the wide world to basically bring his dad back, who's gone to AOL. Um, and while he's out in the world, basically realizes that, you know, like it has this like worldview shattered and realizes that actually he's, his, his entire life's been lied to and stuff. And it's basically about the decay of that sort of trust and also the decay of his morals. Um, and I wrote, similarly, I wrote a piece uh, called Dead Air, which was never put on, which was basically about a man stuck in a bunker okay. um, after the world supposedly ends, and basically about how he got there and um, the sort of like decay of his life. And then back in June, uh, I did a piece for, again, the Basketball Fringe Festival, um, which was live streamed because they had like a live stream festival that year because of COVID. Um, yeah. And that was all about, uh, but it was a one-man show that uh, me and Alfie, my, my flatmate and friend Alfie, um, who is an actor, uh, basically we, we, we sort of um, co-wrote that, I guess, um, mm -hmm. co-created it, and he acted in it, I directed and uh, wrote the initial script um, and designed it. And um, that was basically about this sort of like messiah figure who um, mm. was like this sort of modern age messiah figure who was like message was basically like rejected by people and Ooh, that's uh yeah really interesting thanks yeah it was well, it, what's the name of that one then uh it's called messenger, messenger. it was it's actually a, a recording of it um on youtube somewhere that i can send yeah, you we'll um get a link to that yeah yeah I'll, I'll, I'll chuck it over to you um i've definitely got a copy of it so if there isn't a recording on youtube i'll upload one but i'm pretty sure it's on youtube somewhere so um, it kind of it seems like dystopic yes um, I, yeah i write a lot a lot of sort of like yeah dystopian stuff I guess um, I'm really interested in like yeah like like I said sort of the decay of sort of like society but also like interpersonal uh, decay so like the decay of like relationships and um, but also like on the flip side I'm really interested in the sort of the cycle like you can't have life without decay and vice versa you can't have yeah, you know, the... decay without life so yeah. I'm really interested in sort of like the idea of like things blooming from decay and um, and yeah, and, and just sort of how that's, it's like a self-perpetuating cycle, like it's, you know, never-ending. Yeah. And um, I, I find it really interesting, and it's like not something I've like consciously written about, um, as in like I don't sort of, 
I mean, when I've written in the past, I haven't set out um, to like be like, oh, I'm gonna write a piece on decay. It's just something that I've, re I've recently realized actually working on this project at the moment, um, where I've actively been looking into decay and I've kind of made this connection and be like, oh, okay, that's the kind of thing that mm -hmm. unites all my work. And even in my design work, like there's like always elements of decay. Like I really enjoy designing sort of like uh, beaten up, sort of worn down costumes. And I use a lot of patchwork and um, like, I also really like sort of like absurd abstract uh, designs and like yeah I, I just it's it's a reoccurring theme in all my work and I hadn't realised until recently and it was a bit of like an oh you know yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's a mad moment it's, it's um, great when that happens yeah yeah but... um, so yeah the the decay in the cycle of things blooming from decay mm. um, is this uh, by any chance related to some sort of religious context or Buddhism? Yeah, or, or I mean, I religions was been. I'm I'm fascinated by religion. I so I was raised Catholic. So I okay. um, my mum's Irish Catholic, and um, I think I mean I stopped going to church when I was like 13. But like mm -hmm. I had my like sort of formative childhood years being raised in the church, and I think that comes across a lot of my work. And I write a lot about religion as well. Like, like two out of three productions I've written about have been okay. have been written about religion. Yeah. Uh, I'm interested to hear more about the Messiah. But yeah, 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 sure, yeah. Um, yeah, I can 100% talk about that in a minute. Um, but yeah, so, so Rev 11 was about like a, like a, like a Christian doomsday call, basically, yeah, and yeah. Messiah, uh, and um, uh, the messenger, a uh, messenger was about, yeah, this like, mm. this prophet figure who uh, basically like, uh, his message is ignored and he tells these stories about how his messages were ignored. So there's definitely like, uh, an element of religion in everything I write, which is cool because I'm not really a massive, I'm not a religious yeah. person really, I'm agnostic. Like, um, so yeah, it's, it's interesting how that pops up and I think it is partly because I've been raised in like a religious context, but also the idea of religion and sort of like uh, belief systems really interests me. And, um, mm -hmm. and yeah, like you were saying, the Buddhism and stuff and like Hinduism is something I've been researching a lot recently and um, just because it's, it's not something we're really, I mean, I was really raised with personally like I come from a very mo monocultural part of the UK mm -hmm. um, and it's very very like very uh, CV so um, very what? like Church of England like very sort of like a Protestant part yes. of the UK like okay. I think the, the area that you come from I'd say is like 95% like white Protestant so it's it's very monocultural and so I think like not being raised in an environment where there are sort of different sort of like like ethnic groups and different cultures and different religions uh, has kind of made me very interested in different, you know, cultures and yeah, ethnic groups and religions and stuff. Um, but yeah, so yeah, it's, it's something that really creeps into my work. Again, not really deliberately. I think I've just, it's, it was a big part of my life when I was younger. So it's something that sort of, I think has seeped into my work uh, that way. Okay, let's pause on that. Yeah, And sure. go back to the script writing in mm. particular. Yes. Mm, and talk about your process. Um, when, firstly, when did you first become interested in script writing? So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer that question slightly differently. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've been really interested in writing in general for a long time. Like the first job, <laughs> apart from being an astronaut, the first job <laughs> that I remember really wanting to do as a kid was uh, be a writer. I, re I always really wanted to write sort of like novels and. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, from like probably the age of like six, I'd say. Mm. Um, so from a really, really young age, up until I was maybe like 14, um, I wanted to be an author. Um, and then I sort of got interested in other things and I, you know, I, I, stopped, I stopped sort of writing for a while. Why? Why did you stop? I think honestly, just, I just got interested in other things. I got into theatre and I got into music okay. and um, that sort of consumed more of my time. I, just, I started writing less and less. Um, which, yeah, and then, like, I was doing English at school and stuff and I think sort of having studied English at school kind of killed my passion for it a little bit. Um, and we didn't, but I always really enjoyed creative writing. Like I, I always, like whenever we did that at school, I, I always loved it. That was my favorite part of English. And um, I think it's the reason why I, I pursued it for as long as I did. Um, mm -hmm. It was because I really enjoyed it. Um, it was kind of, yeah, just something that always kind of like, yeah, I don't want to say came naturally to me, but like it's something I've always enjoyed doing. Um, and like I, I yeah, uh, it was sort of a good way of sort of self-expression. And, I, and I've, I, um, also like started songwriting when I was like maybe like properly started songwriting when I was maybe like 12, 13. So I kind of moved away from writing stories and more into writing songs. And I did that for, I mean, from the age of the then till now, I'm 21 now. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so I still do that. And that was kind of like, 
a good that's I guess kind of what like taught me to write is is through songwriting um and then I didn't really get into script writing until I was maybe yeah like in my sort of late teen years and I wrote Rev 11 that was kind of the first like theatre piece as far as I can think that I completely wrote but even then that process was it wasn't it was a weird one because the way we made that show was that initially it was meant to be completely devised it was meant to be just completely like improvised and devised and then we basically would like so like we'd, we'd go into a uh, into the rehearsal room and we'd be like okay today we have uh, this scene and we need to start the scene like that this needs to happen within the scene and then the scene needs to end with this happening so you were it was very much open and yeah <clears throat> I guess like collaborative writing process I yeah. guess but like we we the way we wrote it is that um, we sort of have this device process and then we'd um, like finalise the scene be like okay this is how we want the scene to be and then we write the script Despite it being initially devised, mm. did you already have an idea that you wanted to write Revelation 11? Yeah, 100%, yeah. So I, I, did you have it more sort of tied together in your head but left? Or what, yeah. who was the one who informed doing this project? So I, it was it was my idea to begin with, yeah, okay. if, if, if that's what you're asking. Um, yeah, so I, I, I've, I'm fascinated by cults. Like I said, I'm really interested by religion, but especially sort of like, uh, yeah, cults, and that's the influence they have over people and how people can sort of fall into that. Mm-hmm. So it's something I've wanted, I wanted to write about for a while, and um, I got into doing fringe theatre in 2017, did my first fringe theatre performance, and um, after I performed in that, I just sort of came away from it, and I was like, right, next year I'm going to put something on myself. <laughs> um, and well, well, why why you say on yourself, was it? Oh, so the first time I, first time I was in a fringe theatre piece, I was performing with uh, two friends of mine who were... Uh, a couple of years above me in school, Isaac and Elliot, who have a company called okay. IE, um, and they're uh, they're still doing fringe stuff. They're really great guys, really really good actors, really talented guys. Um, but the first performance they did for Fringe as part of IE was um, was Dollface, which is the first Fringe performance I did. Um, and uh, yeah, and after, and it was it was just a really great experience. Like I mm-hmm. I, I sort of before then had like solely done musical theatre, and so like being able to do something that was a bit weird, a bit abstract, and a bit sort of like, it was site specific as well. So we did it on top mm. of a big hill and you kind of had to like walk all the way up the hill to get to it. And we sort of included that in the performance and stuff. So, um, so it kind of exposed you to a new sort of yeah, potential it, it, of what you could do. Exactly, yeah. Sure. Like up until then, like my experience of theatre had been like what I'd learned in school and musical theatre. Mm-hmm. And that kind of, yeah, exposed me to like, not only sort of like grassroots theatre, like fringe theatre, also to, yeah, like a new form of acting and sort of, mm-hmm. it was very sort of stylistic and stuff. So. Um, so yeah, after that, I was kind of like, because I'd been with that process since the beginning, we, we went into that with like a semi-complete script that Isaac had written, but like, it was written like, it was like finished off as we basically like started rehearsing. So like, yeah. I was more or less with the process from like more or less the beginning. Um, so yeah, so after I kind of finished that, I was like, oh, okay, I've seen how it's been done now and I think I can do this myself. And so... Mm-hmm. I had a lot of friends that were actors and performers and stuff, so I was like, do you guys want to put on the show? And yeah. they were like, yeah, go on then. Um, How did you find that, actually, collaborating with other people on the, the first show that you did? I'm I'm a big believer in that if you collaborate with friends, it's usually a lot... I don't want to say a lot easier. I, I prefer collaboration with people I know, personally. Um, I think that when you collaborate with friends, you're usually on the same wavelength. I think to be friends it, with someone, you kind yeah. of have to be on the same wavelength. And so sort of collaboration and that creative process comes a lot easier and this is why I do a lot of stuff with Alfie um, mm-hmm. because we're both very like-minded people and um, and we're on the same wavelength and you know so as friends we're able to make theatre quite easily um, so yeah and, and that doesn't mean I, I just want to make theatre with friends but it's more the fact that I want to the people I make theatre with I want to be friendly with them if that makes sense so I yeah. don't mind I don't mind like like meeting someone for the first time, being like, "Let's make something," but I've got to have that sort of like connection and that sort of uh, like of friendliness course, with them. You've got to actually get um, something done as well. Yeah, but how did I find that process difficult? <laughs> um, doing doing devising that way has taught me that I personally don't work that way. I need a script, and actually after after that show, um, there was a number of factors in that show that basically meant that it was uh, like I'm really proud of it. I'm really proud of what we did, but there was a number of factors in that show that basically meant that. Um, it was just a bit of a difficult process. I'd finished school and I was on my gap year at the time, but half our cast were in the last year of A-levels. 
uh, one of our cast members working full time. I was also working like more or less full time. So like uh, that made it look uh, quite difficult. Yeah, you value um, different things. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so and yeah, and that sort of devising process of like sort of having nothing or having like a rough idea and then like having getting a script from that was a really informative way of doing things. I'm really glad it happened because mm-hmm. it, it kind of taught me that that's not the way I work. But yeah, it was good. Go, going back to your earlier question, uh, you asked about like how. Um, how um uh like i like did i have the idea in my head already and, and yeah 100 percent. i sort of had an idea of the characters and stuff and an idea of like where i wanted the story to go but the majority of like the uh the sort of filler was made during the devising process do you find that um your expectation and initial thoughts of how the performance would be would be very different from the outcome and maybe that's why you thought the project wasn't as successful or it, was it just yeah it wasn't the end product wasn't what I envisioned it being at the beginning but that doesn't oh. mean I like it like I don't use like it, it wasn't like worse than I thought it would be if that makes sense it was just different to the different. Out, different outcome yeah mm. um, and I think that's because we worked in a very different way it was actually the first we'd all worked together individually before but it was the first time that the five of us I think there were I think there were five of us in total had worked together as like a group so how um, did they find it as well actually yeah I think I mean I think it was it was it, I, I, mean, I obviously can't speak for them but like it was I think I think it was a good collaboration process like we all knew each other so we all went to school together mm-hmm. um, and we were all like some of us were involved in like extracurricular stuff uh, like theatre stuff together um, uh, a few of us like went to a youth theatre when we were younger and like yeah. um, one of the guys I did this performance with I did Dollface with so um, yeah so we were, and like another one of the girls I did um, I, I was I did my yellow drama with so like we all like had acted together before which was really yeah, good yeah. but um, yeah I mean I mean, I, I think we were a good team honestly I think it was a good it was a good company and um, and like I said it really it taught me not only sort of how to like I don't want to say house direct so I've got a lot to learn but like you know it taught me kind of like what I needed to do to be able to successfully direct um, so what was that actually even though the, I know this is a bit off topic wait, from the what you needed to do to actually direct what were the things that you were missing it, it taught me flexibility um, mm. it taught me uh, being like being both the writer and the director of a piece has its pros and cons because it means that I can be really flexible around the writing and I'm I'm not like some writers are really precious about the writing and I like to think I'm not particularly. Um, I'm very willing to like change and adapt things. Um, but it also means that I have a very set vision when I make things. Like I'll, because I'm writing and directing it, I'm kind of like, okay, this is how I see it in my head. Yeah. Uh, there's not really that sort of like flexibility, I guess, which is, um, which is you know, which is a pro and a con, I think, and it it it's you know, I like to think it's worked for me and for the people I work with so far. But mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I think the main <clears> thing <throat> it taught me was flexibility and it taught me how to. It taught me how to sort of manage a lot of things at once, and there's a certain way you kind of talk to people when you direct. I find what is that actually? How like, is that power sort of? I, is there a it's one of those things where I think you have to be like encouraging but also direct direct yeah encouraging but direct um, a lot of especially like a lot of like actors you know I've worked with who aren't you know I guess professionals can kind of doubt themselves and stuff and I think it's just about sort of like having that encouragement but also being like this is how I need you to be or this is how I you know how I think you should do this um, yeah and like I said, it's worked for me, and like, you know, I, I like to think that I'm you know, a nice enough person that I'm not a dickhead about it, you know, but like, um, but yeah, yeah. Did you find yourself towards the end of the, you know, the makings, and when it actually actually had to be produced and performed, did you, were you acting like an asshole at all? <laughs> I like to think a lot, I mean, with Rev 11, it was, it was stressful, because we, a lot of the stuff was left at the last minute, and it was the first performance that... I mean, the first performance, like I said, I'd, I'd written and directed, but also mm-hmm. the first performance that we, most of the, t- the the company had done, as like a fringe festival, um, and as like a, I guess like a, a young person led, theatre thing. So yeah, it was it was stressful. I, I do remember having to be, like stern at points. I like to think I wasn't a, a dick about it, but I, I do I do remember having to be stern. But again, it's something I've learned from, and it's the reason why. Yeah. I I usually go into performances with scripts now. Like when we did Messenger, 
um, I had a fully fledged script when we started rehearsing, and that made it a lot easier. And we were, we still like adapted that and changed that throughout the rehearsal process. So like a I lot. I guess of the it's like a, a form of communication. Hundred percent. Yeah. When you are devising it, um, there is so much in the air still. Yes. Yeah. So it's about pulling them ideas down. Yeah. And when you have the script, it does almost seem there is this sort of uh, initial thought that the script will just make it very tight, but actually it can be a good place to look at and then deviate from. Yeah, I think it's about having that flexibility, honestly. Yeah. Um, and again, I think because I write and direct my stuff, um, well, I have so far, um, it does give me that flexibility to kind of like not be precious about script and to be able to pick it apart. And mm -hmm. like I've said, with, with uh, Messenger, um, throughout the, Alfie and I probably rewrote about I want to say like 30% of that script and it was only like a 20 minute performance so that's you know like a, like a, like a fair, fair chunk of it was sort of like picked apart and rewritten and Alfie would be like oh I, I'm not sure how, how this like this sounds this way but can we do it this way instead and so mm -hmm. I really like that collaborative process with, with, with actors I think that doing sort of small scale stuff and also being friends with people allows you to be critical of each other's work in a constructive way but also it allows you to be really flexible around it and it allows you to like i say just like be able to change everything um mm -hmm. and uh and yeah like equally equally like you know I'd, I'd sort of say to alfie like oh could you try it this way could you try it that way and he'd also be like oh could we rephrase this or rewrite that and uh i like to think it ended up with a decent piece i was i was i was happy with how how That's messenger good. ended up it was, uh, it was nice good. yeah yeah, so, um, sorry, back to the, the the time. I'm interested in the time scale this usually takes sure. because that's also a very interesting thing. Like, did you have the idea for your first show in your head for so long? Were there any sort of blocks for you yeah, to write it? it? It really depends, honestly. Like, um, I guess I'll compare Rev 11 and Messenger. With Rev 11, it was kind of like a, we started that quite early because I... Like I said, I wasn't in school at the time. I mm -hmm. took a year out, so I was just working. Um, but that kind of gave me the luxury, or gave us the luxury of being able to start quite early. I'd say the rehearsal process for that was maybe like five months. Okay. Um, uh, but because that was devised, that was kind of also like the writing process. Um, whereas, and yeah, I had the idea in my head before, and like I came into that sort of rehearsal being like, okay, these are the ideas of the characters that I want. Um, this is the idea of like roughly where I want the story to go. This is kind of like how I want the like. I usually have an idea of the beginning. I usually have an idea of the end. It's just the the filling that I started with. Uh, you know, yeah, coming yeah, up yeah. With. Uh, and it was the same with Messenger. Like I, actually, no, it wasn't with Messenger. Actually, I, I had an idea of the beginning, and I had a rough idea of the stories. But I actually had no idea how to end it. Um, so, but yeah, but with Messenger because I was uh, we were working on that at the same time as we were doing all our unit. Uh, nine stuff um, and you eight with the best stuff we were doing um, it was a bit of a different process because with that I had this idea maybe from like I want to say from maybe like January time of doing this piece about like a uh, kind of like a one day prophet who was basically just like like kind of like a, like, a, like a tramp and like you know just kind of like ignored and like and uh, do you not think that kind of relates to Macbeth is that did you think there was some sort of parallel between that or not I guess so in a way, yeah. I mean, the way that, so like the way that Alfie portrayed him, the way that I kind of like, I wanted to portray him was like, I was actually like, the reason that, one of the reasons I had this idea was because um, I kept seeing street preachers in Wimbledon, like the ones <laughs> in the megaphones, like, yeah. and I was like, I, I, I couldn't stop thinking about them and I like, developed this idea of like, you know. I always like, think like, what, are, what if they are the What if they're right, yeah, that's exactly it, yeah. So this, that's kind of where that idea came from, right. of like, of like, you know, being like, what if actually, yeah, one of these like, crazy dudes that shouts at you on the street was actually like, you know, like, like, a, like a messiah, like a, like a prophet or whatever. Um, so, but yeah, no, definitely, I think there's definitely parallels with Beth in terms of like the, like the sort of mental health stuff and like the, uh, the sort of, uh, that sort of stuff, yeah. Um, yeah, so how long did that piece take? So to... that one was funny because we, like I said, I, I kind of probably started properly working on that around like January. Mm -hmm. And the script writing process was, I, that went through a couple of revisions before we started rehearsing, maybe like, maybe we wrote that like three times before we started rehearsing, but I did it over maybe like three month periods. It, it, I sort of took my time a bit because I kind of couldn't afford the time. The performance was in June. So, um, so yeah, so we had, we had a bit of time. And then um, I want to say we started rehearsing around 
April time, so we had about two months of rehearsals, which I deliberately did because I, I found, and this is coming from a performer aspect, uh, with rehearsing, for me at least, I think there is definitely such thing as over-rehearsing, and like you can do a piece to a point, like you can do a piece so much to a point where like you kind of know it almost too well, and it gets a bit bland. Mm -hmm. I think you need that sort of like nervous energy, and I think you can kind of like over-rehearse the point where you no longer have that. Um, right. But um, so yeah, so with Messenger because I knew it was going to be a twenty-minute-long piece, I gave us two months to basically rehearse it. So we we um and that was including like uh, script revisions and stuff um but that turned out to be a perfect amount of time like like by the end we were we were both like confident in the piece and it, it went well like it was uh, as far as like i think it was a good piece so you began to develop the idea in january mm. um you would say one month for the drafts and the script writing and then two months for the rehearsals yeah I made, like like i did about three redrafts so it was probably about like a month per redraft um all oh, right so okay. uh, yeah so like i, I pretty wrote the first script within i think i actually wrote the first script within like a day honestly i, oh, I just really? kind of like sat down I, and just like was cracked it, it just out like something came yeah honestly it was I, I i'm the way i sort of write is that like i'm a big believer in like just get something down so like i had a rough idea of what i wanted to do um i started off how how the the production was like sort of structured was there was like a, a sort of a monologue at the beginning which was kind of like very street preachery um and it was a site specific piece so we, we, we performed it um in the beer alley like the, the beer delivery alleyway of a pub um so it was mm. this big sort of like echoey sort of like stone corridor basically um but how i wrote the piece was that like um because when I wrote it, we didn't know what our location was. Um, mm -hmm. but, but once we started rehearsing, we did. So we sort of like devised it to be like a site-specific uh, piece around this location. But when I was writing it, it wasn't site-specific, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, but when I was writing it, I had this idea of like, I really wanted uh, Alfie, the actor, uh, to be like style on, on the street, just like shouting as if he was kind of like just a kind of random crazy, you know, homeless dude. <laughs> um, and then uh, because it was being done to a camera, and we sort of had that sort of... Uh, the ability to kind of like make it very personal. Um, one of the really cool things about yeah having it live stream is that they basically recorded it with like GoPros, so it was like you were watching it through a screen, but it was kind of like you were there. Uh, but they also had binaural microphones, so um, oh, okay. yeah, so so it was we sort of mess around with sort of like walking around people, which which Alfie did, which was quite cool. Um, but yes, so um, so so yeah, so I, so because I knew this, I wrote it. So basically, like the first I guess act of this piece would be like this monologue where this guy is sort of like shouting to people and um and sort of you know having all these sort of like crazy crazy sort of uh, thoughts and stuff and then at some point he turns to uh to um uh the camera and then starts talking very personally and basically leads mm -hmm. the, like leads the, the audience into uh, this like tunnel basically uh, and then like tells these two stories so do you think you will incorporate more film to your script writing and performance I, dramaturgy or yeah I mean from a design aspect from a design from a design aspect I I'm really interested in um, the use of like film I really really like it the use of sort mm -hmm. of like live film as well I, it really interests me um, in terms of writing, yeah, sure. I, 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 it's something that I like. That sort of multimedia theatre really interests me. I'm working on a piece at the moment, which is um, a multimedia piece, uh, which I forget to tell you about the update. It's like a VR mm -hmm. piece, but it utilises film and stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just like blending stuff really interests me. Um, but yeah, yeah. Sorry, I forgot what your actual original question was. <laughs> yeah, actually, I think we've gone. A little bit, but uh, no, it's, it's all interesting. No, good. So I nice. think it's, um, let me see. Yeah, the general sort of, I guess, what what show um, do you think is your most successful one, probably? I'd say Messenger, personally, Messenger. because that's my most recent one. Yeah, um, so you've learned from your previous, you didn't really talk much about the Dead Air one. So Dead Air was never staged. Um, oh, right, so that's, yeah, that's yeah. kind of why it was so. meant to be on in 2020 uh, okay. but then Covid happened mm -hmm. um, so it was now, it's, it's one of those ones I've shelved and I really like the idea of it it's again a one man show um, so I really like the idea of it and that, 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 actually, that piece was kind of I guess unique in terms of what I've written because it was a two person show but there was only one actor mm -hmm. so but sorry there was the, 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 premise, the premise was that there was um uh, this dude in a bunker and he was talking to a woman 
uh, through a radio. Uh, oh, yeah. So I played the idea of like potentially having um, like recorded recorded audio with like with like um, with with like the woman being like recorded and then the actors sort of like pre-rehearsing to these like recorded lines if that makes sense. So mm-hmm. like the recording would say something and the he'd say something back and then like recording to say something else. It all be sort of triggered. Um, and I also played the idea of potentially having like an act- actor off stage like saying the lines like into a mic mm-hmm. and it then came through the radio so it was like more live. Um, but yeah, so so but so like it's one of those performances I'd love to go back to at some point. I just like yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll do yeah. it at some point. But like it's yeah. It's Actually, yeah, I'm not quite interested. So when you're script writing, do you mm. what do you usually start off with? Do you start because I I remember we discussed this really briefly, but I forgot actually what you said yeah um so do you think about the characters or do you think about the plot or do you think about a space usually so i'm actually i'm actually like starting to formulate an idea like like, over the past couple of weeks i've had no idea for a for a a script that i might try and put on potentially this summer uh at a festival if i can Mm -hmm. um and so it's kind of followed the similar formula to what most of my stuff does, which is usually I get an idea. I like, I have a lot of ideas like flitting through my head like most of the time, but like the ones I tend to like develop are the ones that won't leave my head. Um, okay. So with like Dead Air and Rev Eleven and Messenger, they're all ideas that kind of like I had and then kept thinking about. Mm-hmm. So usually something like that will happen, and usually it's like a like a premise. Like I really like building like I, I really like telling stories and I really like building worlds, and so. Usually I'll have an idea for yeah, like 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 a like a premise of a world or a premise of a story I want to tell or like and then from there I'll develop characters. Uh usually a lot of my writing is centered around like a singular person. Um and mm-hmm. then sort of like other characters will either reinforce, well, so will reinforce building their world. Kind of, yeah. So with like with Rev Eleven, uh we had a character called Mickey who was this lad who went out into the world to find his dad. Um, and even though that was a five-person play, like the story was centered around him. Uh, with Dead Air, that was obviously a so, uh, like a technically a two-man show, but like I said, like technically a one-man show. But that was centered around the guy in the bunker. And with Messenger, that was a one-man show, so it was centered around the uh, the Messenger. So, and this piece that I'm hoping to write, um, well, I mean, this VR piece that I'm working with at the moment is also centered around the audience member, the one person, and this piece that I'm hoping to write. For, and who, who's that character, the main one? Uh, for the VR piece? Yeah, yeah. So the VR piece is all about um, memories. So basically, uh, the premise is that this, the audience member, who are also like the silent protagonist, have gone into this like liminal space and they're examining their memories. So it's, uh, the, the premise is basically they've like lost their partner and they're examining the memories leading up to this point to try and figure out like what went wrong, basically. Oh, it's like Eternal Sunshine of the but maybe. I haven't seen it, so maybe. <gasps> I need, need to. to watch it's on my it. film that list. I know. Very I know. much um, inspired. I mean, yeah, because <clears throat> they're all they're all men, right? And the if sure, okay. So yeah. I was wondering what would happen if you um, wrote a story from the. And you started off with the character as a woman. Yeah. How would that? Uh, I think it's that sort of like classic sort of cliche of like you write what you know. Um, yeah. But I'd love to. Yeah, I'd love to write from a different perspective at some point. I'd love to genuinely write from a woman's perspective. I would have to bring in a female co-writer because I would feel like I personally would be able to do it justice as you know someone that identifies as male. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be able to do it justice um, if it was just me writing it. But yeah, no, I'd love to. It's, it's something I've actually been thinking about a lot recently. That's true, yeah. And. Um, I I have written female characters before because for Rev Eleven mm-hmm. two of the cast were female, um, so I've written female characters before. And again, like this this character in Dead Air, the the woman on the radio was a female character as well. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, but I've never had a female protagonist, um, and I would I would really like to experiment with that. I think that would be really interesting. Um, yeah. But like I said, I, I I'd have to co-write it with someone. But my my partner Carmen is also a writer, so I I, I we've talked about maybe like co-writing stuff. Awesome. Um, so I, I think that'd be really interesting and like, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm gonna have to uh, round this up. Yeah, that's okay. Because time is... Time is ticking. Time is ticking. Oh, yeah, oh. man. I was really into it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, there's a live audience. No, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, um, gosh, I feel like this should be a subject that should, this should be a discussion that should have like two, <laughs> Two rounds. Yeah. I but mean, um, yeah, we'll definitely return to this. Return to this, of course. Think um, of some more questions. It's it really kind of interesting hearing about the process and the different shows that you've put on and what you've learned. You. And yeah, I wish you all the best. You too. For, um, for the next project. Thank you so much. Yep. Thank Play you. Play the outro jingle. <laughs>